economy or she would protest high cost of living and alleged corruption Sarah sees a Pablo Abbas over failure to clarify details of 344.85 billion National Assembly budget. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. A group of youths on Friday staged a peaceful protest in Oshobo, Washington State, decrying the rising cost of living with a call on the government to immediately intervene. The protesters who wielded placards with inscriptions such as, quote, change the unfavorable policies, Nigerians are suffering, we can't cope again. And we are women, stop restricting the citizens, among others, assembled along MDS Road, Oshobo, very early. Despite the large presence of police operatives near the scene of the protest, the youths kept singing songs expressing the frustration of many Nigerians occasioned by the ash economy. Addressing the protesters, the chairman of Ocean Civil Society, Ocean Civil Society's coalition, Mr. Waid Lawal, said the protest would continue until the federal government finds solutions to the, to the current economic hardship ravaging the country. Joining us to look at this is the chairman of Ocean Civil Society's coalition. OCSC comrade Dr. Waid Lawa and an activist, Ayo Logun. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Good evening, thank you for having me. Uh, comrade Lawa, uh, you want to give us the background there to what may have instructed the drama that was reportedly put up by yourself and some youths in Oshobo some days ago. Hello? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me once again. What happened in Oshobo State Electric Friday was what you can call the spontaneous reaction of the people of the state especially the demographic of the youth on the high cost of living and of course the way of governance in Nigeria. Like it has already been said, sometimes when issues that have to do with the public happens, especially when it has to do with your standard of living, but when it has to do with the, 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 the unfavorable conditions of citizens that are finding themselves by occasion by the policies of government. Sometimes it gets so hard that if care is not taken, what you have will become a non-organized protest. And when that happens, it is a call to revolution. For some months now, people of the country have been groaning under very serious hardship. The cost of food has skyrocketed. Hardly can families afford to, to cater for the health of their wards. A lot of parents have had to withdraw their, their children from school to public schools or lesser schools, lesser than what their parents their wives are attending. A family cannot even afford to say they want to ride a car because they cannot afford to fuel it. All of this put together has been the hardship that people of the country, and with no exception to people of Washington State, have been experiencing. But then there have been assurances and several assurances coming from the government. But it gets to a point that assurances will not do it. People want to see action, especially when the ruling class are not showing any signs of empathy, especially when the ruling class is not showing any sign that they are feeling what the people are feeling and they are cutting codes like they are asking citizens to do. All of this put together was what informed the decision of some youths in Oshawa State to hit the streets in the protest. And I dare say this, that that protest 
It's different from the customary protest that we have been used to. A lot of time, protests have often been organized and led by known activists or society organizations, as the case may be. But what happened in Australia last week, Friday, was not a protest called by the civil society organizations in the states or by any activist as so any known activist so called. It is a coalition of youths that put them together to say, look, we cannot continue to bear this. And if the youth can coordinate themselves to do that, we must not forget so soon the experience of this country in the NSAS, which was about just two years ago. This was the same way it started. Crop of protests in some parts of the country but it became a national issue. Now we've seen protests in Niger, we've seen in some part of Lagos, we've seen in some part of Abuja, and we've seen in our show states. If care is not taken, if government does not do the need to, to ensure that the cost of living is brought down, and citizens can breathe a sigh of relief, I'm afraid that we might be headed for a revolution in our hands. Hello? Dr. Lawa. Can you hear me? Come with Dr. Waid Lawa. Can you hear me, please? Come Dr. Waid Lawa. Can you hear me, please? Can you hear me? I'm hearing you now. You can hear me now. Now, you, you used some words that any respectable journalist must question. You used words like spontaneous. You used words like the youths of the masthead. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh, it was so spontaneous and it was so coincidental that somebody like you was around to lead it and speak on behalf of the organizers. Was it that spontaneous or you were privy to the planning and as, you know, is your civil right anyway, you went out with them. And why would you need to couch to why would you need to cloak it in spontaneity, even if you were privy to it after all Nigerians are suffering? Nigerians what? Nigerians are suffering. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? 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 I can hear you. Can you hear me? You can hear me. Good. Well, if you can hear me, the protest that I led on Friday, the protest that I that you led on Friday, address on Friday, yeah, was organized by a huge organization. I was invited as the chairman of the civil society coalition. So it was not it was not it was not spontaneous because if you were invited, spontaneity would mean that suddenly people who are who were disgruntled came on the streets. So but you used to work spontaneous. So if it was organized and you were invited, it was organized. It was not spontaneous. I was invited as the chairman of the Civil Society Coalition to the to the protest. And I have to address them the pains and the hardship that Nigeria masses are, are, are going through now is massive. And the president should do the needful by addressing all this economic crisis so that our people will, will eat the sign of relief that they elected for a renewal hope, not renewal hardship. Okay, uh, that logic is sound. Nobody living in Nigeria today can say that or contradict that. But one just wonders, uh, comrade, uh, comrade Dr. Waid Lawa, were you aware that the governor of Oshu State got two billion naira 
last December to ameliorate the conditions <laughs> of Osho indigenous and residents? Yes, we, we, we are aware that they, were give, they, they gave us some 2 billion naira. And were you also aware that every member of the National Assembly in Osho, in both chambers, in both chambers of National Assembly, got average of 60 million naira to buy to buy two teller loads of rice for Osho indigenous in their constituencies? I only overheard that one. I cannot confirm that. Because okay. I, uh, no, I, because as we have engaged some of the members of the House of Representatives and they, some of them denied this. Uh, so some, some, of, some denied. So I, 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 I won't base any allegation on the rumor. Oh, when you when we saw some of your colleagues came on national TV whilst they were distributing the items in their constituencies and said that it was a largesse that was given to all the representatives in their chambers. So you, you as the chairman of Oshun Civil Society's coalition, you could just take the word of any representative like that and walk away believing them. Nobody invited any of our representatives to any meeting. And uh, Mr. President was wrong to have collected the subsidy from the masses, now given that money to the government officials. It's wrong. They know, they know the platform that they can use to, to, to turn this into. If they want to get votes from the people, they know where they go. Now, to give them sugar and relief, they were not telling it to the member of the National Assembly. That is wrong. Oh, the members of the National Assembly, to the best of my understanding, are the bona fide and prima facie representatives of the people of their constituencies. Are they, they not? Representative, they were representing their constituencies. Ask many of them how. When last did they visit their constituency? That, 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 that should be the concern of Mr. President. Mr. So, President asks his own people that they can turn those things to. So you are now telling me that in your position as the chairman of Oshu Civil Society's coalition, you do not think it is somewhat important to have a mechanism to subject these individuals and the governor that collected two billion naira to, to subject them to a form of accountability to making sure making sure that those funds impact positively on their constituents. You don't think you have that responsibility? What, whatever you collected on behalf of the master of two. But it is the president that removes our city, that, that brought all these on to ask if there are people. So we don't have to ask Mr. President to, to relieve our people of this pain and ask it. I, I, I am not against you, I, I am not against you lacerating the president for whatever he may have done right or wrongly. I am saying that you live in the Federation and the closest, the closest forms of government to you or the closest strata of government to you are two levels of government, your local government and your state government. And I'm sitting there now listening to somebody who ordinarily, by the virtue of the title that I see that you are parading, you should be in the know than an average Nigerian. And I'm basically saying that I'm listening to a man who may be more predisposed to his tunics than going surgically to attend to the failures of the three strata of government. Rightfully, as you are lambasting the president, talk to your governor, talk to your local government chairman, talk to members of your state House of Assembly. Talk to members of your uh, representatives of the National Assembly from your state. That would have been more that would have been more holistic and you wouldn't have been seen 
to be parading yourself as because I, I, I'm sitting there now believing that if you were to be say in a, uh, if you were to be say in an APC state, you may not even come out. I would rather that your colleagues in other states, other southwestern states who are in APC states also come out like you, but make sure that the walloping goes not only to the president who is far away in Abuja, but to your governors and to your members of the National Assembly and State House of your Houses of Assembly and local government chairman. That is the point I'm making. Do you agree with me? Hello, Comrade Dr. Waid Lawal. Are you there? Hello, Comrade Dr. Waid Lawa. I'm hearing you, but I cannot hear you clearly. So, your last, your, your last statement, I, I, I cannot get it. I was saying that nobody living in Nigeria today can discountenance the fact that things are hard. And rightfully so, people should find the mechanisms to let those who are in government be aware that things are hard. But I am sitting there talking to somebody who is who should be functionally and organically knowledgeable than an average Nigerian because you are the chairman of Oshun Civil Society's coalition. And I'm saying rightfully as that protest in Oshobo was conducted on Friday you should also be using the same protest to talk to the governor of Oshun who collected 2 billion naira in December who I have not seen any pictures of so, uh, of uh, palliatives being given to people in Oshu. I am also telling you that it is on good record by members of the two chambers of the National Assembly that the presidency gave them funds to also distribute palliatives to their, to their constituents. I want to believe that somebody like you should be lambasting them too. I am also saying that local government chairmen have gotten, as a result of the removal of subsidy, they have gotten their allocations increased. And so I see hypocrisy. If rightfully you are lambasting the president who sits in Abuja, but you are not lambasting the governor who is with you in Oshobo, you are not lambasting the members of the House of Representatives who were elected from constituencies in in Oshun State and the, and, the, and, and the Senate, and you are not lambasting the chairman of local government for leaving the people dry. There is a deed of hypocrisy in that. And I'm thinking, you know what? You could do that protest in Oshun State, because the party in government in Oshun State is PDP. Why are not your members in other states controlled in the Southwest by the APC? Why are they not doing the same thing? You see the hypocrisy? We, what we are addressing is a national issue. We, we, we are going to engage the governor of Oshun on every corporate that he has collected on behalf of the masses of, of mass abortion from the federal government. Every elected senator, member of the House of Representatives that must have collected anything on behalf of our people, they will be held accountable. But Mr. President is the one that has the power to remove fuel subsidy. And the removal of fuel subsidy cause all the pain and agony that we are facing in Nigeria too. And that was simply the reason why we are addressing the president. There is no government that has the right to say it, it will remove the so, so, subsidy. Only the president has the, has the authority to do that. Uh, comrade Dr. Waid Lawa, I... Yes. I want to believe that any reasonable Nigerian would uh, 
believe that it is within your constitutional right and the constitutional right of those who came out that you addressed on Friday to do what you what you did. Nobody can yeah. discountenance that. But yeah. um, also, by virtue of the responsibility incumbent on me on this seat, um, also, uh, I should also let you see that we have a value chain of iniquity in leadership in Nigeria. Um, on the one hand, if you are lamb rightfully lambasting the president, you must be looking at a governor who collected two billion naira, and you must also be talking to local government chairman whose uh, fact allocations have gone up by about three hundred percent, and you must also be looking at the members of the two chambers of the National Assembly. That is the point I'm making and I really want us to agree in so much as I've agreed on your right to protest. Okay. We will wrap up the first segment and move to the second segment of the show after this short commercial.